is the Glass Cannon Network. There, scoundrels, and welcome back to Dusk Ball. You are tuning in to Haunted City Season Dew. We're back with another parcel of episodes about a crew of weirdos who commit crimes in a haunted steampunk city. My name is Jared Logan. I am the game master. We are, of course, playing Blades in the Dark, the incredible game by John Harper and Evil Hat Studios. The best role-playing game made in the last 20 years. Go and buy yours wherever fine books are sold. And if they don't have this book in the bookstore, be like, you don't sell fine books here. And then knock over a shelf. Uh, As always, I have my incredible players with me. They are back. We didn't lose any of them. Some of the negotiations, the contracts were really tough this time. <laughs> and there, mm-hmm. there is mm-hmm. some awkwardness and bad blood between us now, but we did manage to get all of them back. Please welcome Ross Bryant, Josephine McAdam, and Abu Salim, everybody. Yo. Yes. Hey. What yeah. a way to open. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. And uh, sorry about all the stuff with the contracts, Abu. We should have... <laughs> I know you were really angry and there were some strong words exchanged, but yeah. uh, it so should all be fine that. now. Uh, your agent should should be have it should have that pretty soon. Listen, <laughs> it's been I'm joking, of course, Nate. <laughs> I'm making all of that up. OK, yeah, that's right. It's all water under the bridge now. It's all water <laughs> yeah. under the bridge. It's uh, made up. OK, so it's been a while. It's been a while since we were it's, back playing yeah. this game. How has everyone's life changed since season one? Anyone? Oh, wow. Us personally? Yeah. How does you? How has your life changed? It, when did when we? Was end? The last time we recorded October. Yeah. yeah October, October of twenty twenty two. No. Was it? No. It was- no, because I I so I got married in September, which happened, which we talked about. So like it had to have been after. Oh, October is after September, isn't it? It is in the Julian calendar. It is after uh, September. Yes. Is that the calendar we're using? Uh Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh-huh. Or are Mm -hmm. we using the Gregorian? I can never remember. Is it? Ross knows. Are we are uh, yeah. we on the Gregorian or the Julian We're calendar? We're on the Julian calendar, but unfortunately, I'm on the Mayan calendar, so I haven't known what month it is since 2012. Right. <laughs> and you're constantly prophesying that the world will end next year. That's right. Uh, the Emerald Serpent cometh. Yes. This is exactly why negotiating my contract was hard, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just, you know. It's hard to yeah. get on the same page. It's yeah. really hard to be on the same Wait, page. Wait, I thought we, I thought we ended in like November. I don't know. Look. Well, a lot has happened, right? Yeah. Uh, Everyone's perception of time is totally obliterated over the past five years. What (laughs) happened? Lots of stuff. Um, But, but, you know, it's all just been biding time. Um, Every minute, a century, every, every hour, an aeon waiting for, for this moment, Jared, when finally we would return to the, to the darkened alleyways of Duskfall. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Wow, really? That uh, that's, that's awesome that's that you were just kind of waiting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, you guys know a lot has gone on in my life. My my wife left me and uh, <laughs> huh. I shouldn't the, laugh. Why you made me laugh? I know we're immediately laughing. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she took the kids. Yeah. So, uh, I have Sad. a lot of time to plan duskfall adventures now. I can tell you that much. Um, <laughs> Oh, great. Just me and a quart of whiskey and Blades in the Dark by John Harper and Evil Hat Studios. Oh, I know something that happened in the intervening time. We actually met each other in person for once. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, first, Josephine met Abu in London. Yes. yes. And then we all met up in Los Angeles. Yes, we did. And that's great. And I didn't realize that Abu was only four feet tall. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Like everyone thinks I'm taller and yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy. I loved it. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. But also I I, I think I, I distinctly remember you trying to get a burger. Was it a burger that day, that night? Oh, and, oh like, my it God. was just really terrifying. That guy was oh, terrifying. My God. 
Yeah, there was a there was a burger pop up at the bar we were at, a sort of a, a food truck, and then I ordered a burger, and then three hours passed. Yeah, honestly. And then a guy showed up, and he was like, "Yeah, did you get a burger?" And I was <laughs> like, "Oh God, you're the one that made it. I don't know if I want it now." Yeah, it was I wish it was though, an right? exaggeration, but it's like not a, it's it's very true. true. I know, like literally, very true, very creepy. There was also true. like an altercation between someone else's like. Oh, like yeah. meal that he was going to give away to yeah. someone else. And it's, it's great. There's a lot it of was... very tense uh, energy around that burger <laughs> pop-up. Well, <laughs> you guys had to be there. The burger thing was intense. Yeah. It was. Um, um, oh, uh, Ross and I wrote and shot a f- short film. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. Oh, that's wow. Right. And uh, that'll be able to be seen pretty soon, right? <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I read it and it's so funny. So I can't wait for people to see it. Huge, huge for vampire fans. Am I giving away too much? No, you, I don't if think you, so. If you're a vampire fan or you've played vampire, you got to see this short film when it comes out. And of course, we'll be posting it on the Discord and everything um, for the last and when it happens. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I guess that... that um, that lets the, uh, the audience know where we are at as people. Um, <laughs> they probably feel a little sorry for us, but that's okay. Um, they should feel sorry. Yeah, they should. <laughs> uh, but we're here to entertain you. We're here to dance like puppets for you. So with that in mind, a thousand years ago, this was a oh land of beauty and magic. Then came the cataclysm that blotted out the sun and ripped open the gates to the land of the dead. The city of Duskfall is a metropolis of tenements and factories surrounded by crackling lightning barriers. Outside the city is a wasteland of the ravening undead. Inside is a teeming hive of scum and villainy, intrigue and corruption. The sun is gone. The only thing that shines in Duskfall are the blades in the dark. (laughs) You know, I realized as I was doing it, I forgot one line. And if you know the line I forgot and you send it in to the Discord for Haunted City, I will be like, yep, that's it. (laughs) (laughs) And you, it won't win anything. Here we are. We are back in Duskfall. And I'm going to give you a brief recap. Let me know if I missed anything, players. But the Remnant, the Remnant have been going through it. Your crew of Shadows, the Remnant, had so many changes, so many twists and turns during our first 25 episodes. But let me tell you where they are right now. Recently, the lover of... Juliet Bell Rose, Ophelia, inhabited the body of one of the crew members, Ekaprag Wodi, creating a composite being known as Ekphelia. They are a vampire because that's what happens when a ghost possesses a body for too long. They become a vampire. And so Ekaprag Wodi, as a vampire, joined the crew. Together, you visited the Imperial City. Then you cleared out some tunnels for the foundation, fighting an army of hollows, which are soulless animated corpses. While you were down there, you met a mysterious figure that also happened to feed on life force. Ekphelia and this uh, person fed together. Then back at the grotto, (laughs) love was in the air. Valkos and Julia Bell Rose shared an intimate moment. And when they did that, some questions rose in my mind as your GM. What is going to happen to Ekphelia? Ekphelia, who is obsessed with her relationship with Juliet Bell Rose. Ekphelia, who has strong feelings, who is almost an animated corpse driven brought back by her love for Julia Bell Rose is part of the Ekphelia of being and here Juliet is feeling feelings for Valkos it's a love triangle and it mm-hmm. feels dangerous but the final score of the season was an attack 
on the facility of Una Feroz. Una Feroz was the enemy of Juliette Bell Rose, the person who either covered up or caused in some indirect way the death of Ophelia in the first place. Una Feroz, a high ranking member of the Spark Rights Guild, the guild that Juliet used to belong to along with Ophelia. Una Feroz had created a new facility, a new way of dealing with ghosts in Duskfall that would make the Spirit Wardens almost obsolete. She had created new technology that could capture ghosts and hold them in a containment unit. I was not inspired by any sort of IP or pop culture in the creation <laughs> of these ghost slayers uh, that mm -hmm. inhabited this facility. Your characters, Valkos, Juliet, and Ekphelia, broken. You smashed into the containment unit. You released all the ghosts. You poured, <laughs> you poured an alchemical concoction all over Una Feroz, which sort of transferred her into the ghost realm, just as the ghosts were swarming out of the containment unit. And then, barely escaping through the mine shafts beneath the facility, you came up onto the street, and the blue coats were there waiting for you. Now, in our final episode, I think I said there were five blue coats. I would like to take a flashback. I'm gonna take on oh. three stress to say that there were 25 blue coats. <laughs> <laughs> there were a okay. lot of blue coats. I think we all agree that Valkos could single-handedly handle five blue coats. You right. are very clever. You are yeah. very, mm -hmm. very clever. But it doesn't say it in the book, but occasionally, according to me, the GM is allowed to take a flashback. <laughs> and so uh, I am, uh, oh, I'm stressed out. I'm putting stress on my sheet and I'm saying that there were a lot of blue coats and our PCs, our crew have been apprehended, which means they are on their way to be incarcerated in Iron Hook Prison. In fact, they're not on their way. Let's cut straight to them there. Each of you, yes, each of you have been serving several weeks already in Iron Hook Prison. You're of course confined to different cell blocks. They are not going to allow you to fraternize with each other. You have been doing your time alone. And while you were doing your time, in this facility. And let me describe the facility a little bit. Iron Hook is an entire building made of metal. Now it's been around for a while, so a lot of is a lot of it is rusted. And nothing about it is sleek or modern. It's all big, heavy bolts, rusted bolts, and corrugated metal and barbed wire and big heavy vault-like doors that shut with a loud clang and then the lights go off and you know you're trapped. You're in there for a good long time. Each of you is wearing a prisoner's uniform. All of your gear has been confiscated, of course. Your prisoner's uniform is a lot like a prisoner's uniform in our world. It is a sort of a denim one piece, but the difference is in Dusk ball, they attach little electroplasmic lamps to you. So <laughs> anytime you are, so for example, like uh, out of an area you're supposed to be in, it starts flashing. And uh, that is sort of how they keep track of you and spot you quickly. They don't need a spotlight to see escape prisoners. You're just going to light up like a Christmas tree if you go outside an area that you're supposed to be in. So you've been serving your time here. And with that in mind, let us join Juliette Bell Rose in her cell, and let's talk to her about her XP. Hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ah, yes, XP. Yes, Can you've I, been- Do we know how much time we're serving just as a- Yes, that's a great question, and I'm gonna handle that as we go through uh, all the okay, different pieces okay. of downtime. Okay. Because it has to do with your heat and your wanted level, and- okay. uh, I just want Got you guys it. to know you're wanted. Okay, so, 
very good. Juliet Melrose, I'm looking at your character sheet. It yeah. is a mess. You have yeah. so many harms. Whew. You guys well. drove it like you stole it in that final score. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah. But I do see some desperate actions that you recorded. So let's go through your XP. You're sitting in your cell and you're you're reflecting on what happened to you. That final score. Where did it all go wrong? Or, well, tell me, is Juliet actually, does she feel vindicated? Does she feel relief? She finally sort of destroyed Unaferos. In fact, yeah. I'm taking away, I'm taking away the clock that we've been working on, the long-term project oh. that says destroy Unaferos' yeah. rep. Unaferos herself, I think she's been, she's probably been destroyed, right? I'm taking away that clock. So I, how does she you feel? you can answer that. Um, how does she feel? I think she is disappointed that she doesn't feel much from having done that. And I think she's feeling very disappointed in herself at this moment. <clears throat> in long reflection in one's own prison cell, you know, to yourself. It was like a lot of meditation happening. Oh, and by the way, you're not all by yourself. You have a cellmate. Well, okay. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, your cellmate is Raisa. Raisa? Raisa. She's a Severosi woman. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, no, I think she's feeling... Maybe for the first time in her life, like a bit of an idiot. Really? Yeah. yeah. So she, so her vengeance didn't give her satisfaction. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think in the moment, yes, but I think now that the um, heightened emotions have cooled some with time, that there is this uh, a bit of reflection happening, and perhaps she's not liking what she is seeing. Very good. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Does she feel like she addressed a challenge with technical <laughs> skill or mayhem? Yeah, I think I think she absolutely did. Honestly, <laughs> I think this is going to be a good XP. Uh, I think she did in spades, so go ahead and take two for that. Okay. Um, did she express her beliefs, drives, or heritage? Yes, yeah, she actually took out yes. her enemy. Go ahead and take two for that. Okay. Did she struggle with issues from her vice or trauma during the session? I mean... Mm. Uh, obligation to my deceased partner, my vice. Yeah, yeah. Take, one, take one for that. <laughs> and then um, I have vengeful. I got payback against someone who harmed me or someone I care about. Woo, take one for that. Which will also, we'll also get that for our crew XP when we get there, since my crew helped me. Okay, rem remind me of that. And then you have yeah. two desperate XP that you clocked in your um, insight Skills. Would you Ooh. like to move those over to your general XP and fill up the tracker? Ooh. Ooh, why not? I mean, that's kind of fun. And then I'll spend my time looking through what I'd actually want to do with that. Um, I didn't even think about XP. Yeah, let's fill out the... I'll move them down. Let me... Very good. So... Go ahead and look at what uh, special ability you would like to grab with that uh, with that filled up XP tracker. That's and all we can do, right? Is just the, a new ability, or is there something else with XP? There is uh, a new ability, I believe, is the way okay. that you go. Okay. If you want like more to an action, if you want more dots to an action, you have to fill up that tracker. Right. Okay. So uh, you are in your cell, and Eresa who has like a long, long black hair, but it's of course, it's gotta be done up in like kind of a tight ponytail while you're in the prison block. She's just like carving. She's, she's, she's mean looking. She's just got like a cast to her face, which makes her look like someone you don't wanna mess with. And she's just carving Severosi letters into the wall of your cell. You can see there's a couple other places where people have carved things. What is Juliet doing? What is she spending her time doing other than marking XP while she's in her cell? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, how many how many days has it been? It's been, um, let's see. 
It's been 12 days. It's been 12 days. It's been 12 days since you were arrested. <laughs> um, and what do we have in these? Like, how bare are they? Like, what's... The cells are pretty bare and yours is pretty small. I'm going oh, okay. to ask some questions about how you are situated in terms of coin inside the cell in a little bit. But for okay. now, just assume that any arrangements you made haven't taken uh, yeah. effect yet. So it's small. It's two cots hanging, each one hanging off the side and a small toilet bowl. And by the way, you do not want to hear Raisa go to the bathroom. It is a whole thing. <laughs> and uh, you're a little bit worried about her gut health. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think Juliet has quite literally been spending time like meditating. Like I think she's been sitting in the cot, <laughs> staring at the wall, watching watching Raisa. Um, curiosity, maybe uh, being reminded of Valkos every now and then uh, through watching her too. And I think having a bit of a uh, different mental breakdown in herself, but I think it's just like she's like deep into this like sort of meditative stance like I don't think she's responding very well to people when they do ask I don't think she's fighting any of the guards when they ask her to do anything I think she's very amenable and just sort of floating through wherever they got themselves here very good so we leave Juliet staring at the wall closing her eyes trying to find the present moment or maybe just trying to drift away from the place her physical body is anchored. And we travel through the corridors, over rooftops, to a different entire wing of Iron Hook, and we find Ekphelia in their cell. Ekphelia, small cell, rusted iron bars, you do have a cellmate. Your cellmate's name is Finn. Finn is big, bald, bulging. He looks like a big lump of dough. <laughs> Everything about him is big and doughy. And he uh, he talks a lot, but he he's not very erudite. So he's just constantly telling you really long, boring stories about his time on the outside. <laughs> Great. He used, to be a, he used to be a fungus farmer. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> um, so, cool. Um, so, yeah, just, just picture Ophelia, um maybe, like, standing or leaning against a wall as Finn, this lumpy fellow, is... Describing the intricacies of mushroom cultivation. And through heavy lidded eyes, Ekphelia is just watching them with extreme thirst. Um. Yeah, let's talk about a vampire in prison. <laughs> right. There is no sun in Duskfall, so there's no danger of, you know a vampire being fried by the rays of the sun in this world. So you can sort of exist day to day, night to night in this environment, but you probably are hungry and we will deal with that in a little bit when we relieve stress and uh, do our healing uh, if anybody chooses to do those things. But what mind state is Ekphelia in? So yeah, as 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 Ekphelia is like playing the meek little um, prison ward, um, and very much putting themselves in a subordinate position to Finn, just like um, 
much too PG, but I'm glad I got put with a real butch dolly boy like you. And uh, is very, and is like flirtatious, you know, probing the, seeing, seeing what makes Finn tick. And while all that is going on is just, there's a joy that Unifaris has been ripped to bits. Um, and it was brief and it was, and that, and that little flame of joy was immediately blown out by the, um, by the hot wind of jealousy and, (laughs) and, um, for what the, for the relationship that, uh, Ophelia sees brewing between the, uh, the other members of the remnant. Oh, how aware is Ekphelia of that? Because Ekphelia, of course, wasn't privy to that moment of intimacy. No. So how how does <laughs> Ekphelia know? <laughs> oh, no. Because, I mean, we never said this, but like, Ekphelia can occasionally read people's read minds. <laughs> <laughs> like, and oh, also, my God. And also, Ekphelia is not blind to the subtleties of communication. The sighs, the groans, the invasion. Ah. How dare you? The, the uh, oh, the the glances. Oh, in moments of danger, how, how, the concern. Um, as they oh. as they reach for one another, as they assist <laughs> one another, it's all so adorable, isn't it? And um, and yes, um, maybe not enough to. I mean, we could we could adjudicate that because I spend stress to do that, but like, and uh, but I think yeah, there have been moments where I've like had flashes of into the mind of these two and have seen uh, myself being edged out. Well, we're both wearing matching rings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. I forgot that Ekphelia is telepathic. That's gonna really. Uh, that's gonna really let her. Uh, them uh, sort of know what's happening between the other two. So let me ask Ekphelia this. Oh, shit. Do you think you displayed your dominance or slayed without mercy in that last score? (laughs) Yes, I do, Jared. (laughs) (laughs) Really? In what what capacity did you do that? Um, by, uh, chaining up Unifaros and 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 making it clear to her that we were not only going to rip her apart but to rip her reputation apart and uh that she would be blotted out in the in the memory of, of the city that she is like so arrogantly sworn to protect and uh and you know also assisting in the destruction of a building full of other people Oh, that's true. Okay, go ahead and take two for that. Yeah. Did you express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? Yeah, you did. Take two for that. Because you... And did you struggle with issues from your vice, traumas, or strictures during the session? Um, Let's remind everybody, what are your strictures? The strictures that I took, because a vampire has to take a, a sort of balancing hindrance to every vampiric strength it acquires... Bound is the first one I took that Ekapragwodi is holding Ophelia in place. And normally, a, or under, if not beholden to this stricture, a vampire could, in theory, leap from body to body. But um, if Ekaprag perishes, Ophelia is destroyed. Um, and the other one is Bestial, where if I suffer physical harm or overindulge my vice, um, my body twists into a horrific bestial form until I feed next without overindulging. And, oh, uh, that's going to go over well in prison. Definitely. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, um, oh my god. I was. I think I maybe was a little. Uh, um, I mean, I, th- I definitely was going for my traumas, my ruthlessness, my obsession, and my vicious nature. Uh, and also was maybe a little bit more, more cagey about physical harm because I didn't want to totally vamp out. Right. I hear that argument and I say, no, 
but you do have one desperate action <laughs> in resolve, so you can move that over and you'd be one away from a special ability, or you can keep it in resolve. I will move it. Very good. I like to move it. Move it. And yes, we'll put it right no, there. Uh, no. Yes. Yes. Yes, I like to move it, move it too. And I uh. love that you're very close to another horrific special ability. <laughs> Slash stricture. Yeah, love that. Love that for me. Uh, oh, you great. get another stricture when you get a special ability. That's right. Ooh. So just uh, give me the rundown. What is Ekphelia doing? For example, let's say bah! door slides open and it's time for breakfast. Mm. Everybody starts shuffling down the corridor to eat. What is Ekphelia doing during mealtimes? Ekphelia is um, uh, bartering their food, which they're not eating, um, for um, favors and information. Who wants double portions? Well, that sort of thing comes with a price. Ah, very good. Let's go ahead and start doing a little free play. What action would you use to kind of set up that barter? Because nobody knows you. Right. Consort, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. So... Give me a consort roll, and let's say, because we're just sort of doing free play right now, and that's a great idea, I'm going to make it controlled for standard effect. Uh, here we go. How, how do you do? Four. Four. I rolled, I rolled a four. Success with a consequence. The success is you get something you want right now. What is it that you wanted? What did you trade for? Keep in mind, it should be something... <clears throat> that you could reasonably find inside of a prison. Could be contraband, but it probably couldn't be, you know, a pistol. Great. Um, I want X. Okay. Uh, I want a job. In particular, I want, uh, I want the ability to move around. Um, like some people get to work in the library, if there is such a thing or maybe the infirmary or the kitchen. Um, I want I want more access to people. Interesting. So for a couple portions of food, you can't quite get that. You had standard effect, not great effect. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm going for. So, But, um, but you do get one instance right now of being able to move somewhere you're not supposed to be. You've right. earned Ooh. one, but there was a consequence if you recall. Yes. And the consequence is you had to kind of go up the chain of command a little bit to get the favor done. And you had to talk to one of the bill hooks, mm -hmm. a guy named Highwater. And he said he could maybe get you off the work crew, get you onto a different crew inside the facility for a day. I understand you've been uh, helping out fit keeping him fed yes that's right he's a he's a large butch dolly boy needs his extra portions don't he I don't like the sound of dolly boy but you need to move you need to get somewhere I can make the arrangement Um, great. Keep that in mind. You have a I go connection. anywhere you want. You have a go anywhere you want one time card right now. Excellent. And as we finish our little breakfast meeting with Ekphelia, we move across the facility to <laughs> another wing of the prison where Valkos is brooding in his cell. Valkos... They tried putting someone else in your cell. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really work out. Because <laughs> he wanted your pillow. Uh, yeah. So you're now in a higher security wing. <laughs> and you would have been in with Ekphelia maybe, but they've moved you to a higher security wing. And you are in a solo cell, which is the size of a small walk-in closet. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Malchus, what have you been doing with your with your time? I think I've I have been similar. I think I, I've 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 definitely been meditating as well. I think I've been Oh you guys are so alike. You know, we are I've definitely been trying to focus Oh and Did they leave did they take the rings that we were wearing? Like, do they even remove that? No. They let so, you keep a, a very simple, unadorned ring. They let you keep that. So this is mm. the thing. So I think I've been focusing on the ring and feeling the calmness from the lady of my dreams. I have been calm as well and calming myself. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, damn, I'm sorry that I just uh, unilaterally decided that Valkos fucked someone up. It sounds no, like I def- I, de- I definitely did it. They tried to take my pillow. But, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I, would- <laughs> I mean, yeah, that happened. But it sounds like it sounds like Valkos is trying to find center here in prison. Valkos, you're thinking back as you meditate mm. on your score inside the facility and do you think that you addressed a challenge with violence or coercion? I mean, yes. <laughs> I think you did a lot of that. Go ahead and take two XP for that. Okay. Do you think that you expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? I think... I think I... <laughs> yes, because I, I, I challenged a big ghost, right? You did. Yes, you did. Right? Yes. And that ghost was big enough that you can take two for that. Amazing. Now, That's did you right. struggle with issues from your vice or traumas during the session? I don't think so. I don't think you did either. You are currently one away from a special ability, and it looks like you tracked a lot of desperate actions. I did. <laughs> I really did. Okay, so mm. um, I'm oh, looking yeah, at... Were... Yeah. Place. you're. Uh, you've got a ton of desperate actions here. So your prowess meter is full. You can yep. go ahead and turn that into a dot. You can move the desperate actions from insight or resolve into your main, your main XP, and go ahead and take a special ability as well. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna move my resolve one. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh crap! And then move that in there. Take a special ability, which I know what I'm gonna go for. What are um, you taking? I'm gonna put. Sorry, we're just gonna put a dot in maybe prowl, um, and I'm gonna take. Calculating. Calculating. Which is from the spider, which essentially, I shall read it to you. Uh, hold on if I can find it. Wait. It is. Due to your careful planning during downtime, you may give yourself or another crew member plus one downtime action. Ooh. Whoa. You guys are. Andy. And, and, you wow. know, Ekphelia has a similar ability as well. Mm-hmm. So you guys right. are just grabbing extra downtime actions. Be sure to click veteran on your sheet because that's how you take mm-hmm. those. That's a veteran ability. Well, yeah. Anytime you take something from a different playbook, mm-hmm. um, then you have to then you have to take veteran. But we can you, do that three you times? Can, you can do it more than once is what it says on the sheet. So I guess infinity. I heard. <laughs> I remember three from somewhere. It's just maybe. Who knows? Boy, your GM tells you infinity, and you you think that there should only be three. No, in, let's take infinity. No, very well, three it is, <laughs> and uh, so very well done, Valkos. I guess the rest of the XP is gonna. Uh, let's go ahead and clear that prowess. Yeah, yeah. and um, do you want to keep the rest of the XP and in insight and in resolve in those little bars? Do I? Yes, I do yes. actually because yes. Great. Very good, Valkos. Valkos, other than meditating, what have you been up to? So, I mean, what so this high security um prison block. Mhm. Who do I see? Do I see anyone? Do I see anything? Oh, you see lots of things because every day they make you Along with maybe some of your crewmates as well, but you're separated. Leave the prison 
and go and work in Dunville Labor Camp. Interesting. Dunville Labor Camp is a big, muddy hole in the ground where (laughs) you get to spend hours in the elements hacking away at the earth, pulling out huge chunks of rock, loading them onto carts. Here is the exact description from the book. Poor prisoners who can't afford to bribe the staff at Ironhook spend most of their days toiling at Dunville Labor Camp, loading precious ores onto barges for the rail station and breaking the larger rocks hauled from the mire. What is the mire? Well, that's sort of the place you're sort of also working in. The mire is a massive mud quarry pit. The mire is the site of the impact of an ancient celestial body, which left behind a variety of precious ores and jewels embedded in the earth. And so every day we know for sure that Valkos up until now has been out there just hacking away at the earth, lifting big quartz deposits onto barges. Mm. You're surrounded by guards when this happens. You've got the little light on your prisoner's uniform. Anything you want to make happen while you're out there? Or are you right now just biding your time? I think what I'm trying to... So we got pickaxes, right? Yes. So I'm thinking of trying to... We don't get given the same one. But before we, before we, you know, we start our session, before we start our, you know, our, our work, I always check to see if there's ever, ever one that's a touch loose. Just, you know, just in case I need like an, you know, to take, you know, get a neck, like a little weapon of some sorts, you know, you know, so I'm, I'm looking and I'm checking if there's one loose. And if there is, I'm trying to almost break it on purpose and trying to stealthily take it back with me. But do they search us? What's that? Do they search us? Do they like search us on oh, the way there and on the way back? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Fuck. If you okay. want to be able to, so you're trying to keep some precious ore for yourself. No, I'm trying to keep a pickaxe or like some a form pickaxe? of like, <laughs> like the head of it or like the, the a, a broken piece of it. A broken you know? piece of pickaxe. Interesting. Oh, like a shit. You know, I'm trying to <laughs> get a weapon. What would you me. use? What action would you use to do that? So I think I'm trying to use finesse because it's you know yeah. it's a sleight of hand right it's it's absolutely yeah. absolutely let's see what tier our iron hook prison guards are if i can find them here um I- i'm not going to take all the time to look it up right now i'm just going to tell you that this is going to be desperate or limited effect okay Security is tight. They're monitoring what you carry. It comes the lucky rolls, guys. Let's see if I still Let's got go. it this year. 2023. Desperate rolling downtime. 2023. Let's go. I got a five. Yeah. A five. Okay. Yeah. A five means success with a consequence. Okay. Uh, and the success means that you got a little piece of a handle of a pickaxe. Like the very bottom section of a of a pickaxe. Okay. You got it in. And let's not get into detail about how you were able to smuggle it in, because just holding it in your uniform would not have been enough. But the consequence is that another prisoner sees you do that. <sighs> do I know who? Yeah. This prison's name is prisoner's name is Sim. Sim. Sim is scrawny but wiry. And everybody thought Sim would collapse out in the labor camp, but Sim has been keeping up his own. He's got one of those like pencil mustaches that cling to your top lip, and he's balding with a comb over that because he's in prison, he hasn't really been able to keep up. So a lot of days it hangs up, you know, it sits up straight on his head. Uh, but. He eyes you and you see him for a second and then his eyes turn away. He sees that you've smuggled something. Uh-oh. Something else happens. As you are being led back into the prison, you see another line of laborers going out for a different shift. And among them, in the line that's passing yours, sort of like when Little League teams say, good game, good game, good game. 
The other line that's passing yours, Juliet Bell Rose, is among the prisoners moving out oh my God. <laughs> into the labor camp. Oh. <clears throat> In his cell, Ekaprag is contemplating his ring and just sees it. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm actually going to it, where's Sim? Is Sim behind me or in front of me? Sim is ahead of you. Okay, brilliant. When we cross, I'm going to try and slip Juliet Burrows the end of this the uh, the end of this uh pickaxe. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. All right. Oh, so it is so cute. Prison love. So okay. So go ahead and make another roll for me. And this will be. This this is. Uh, oh my God. This is going to be desperate because if you get in trouble, it's going to be big trouble. And this time it'll be maybe both of you. Desperate. And we'll say, but we'll say standard effect. You'll you'll okay. manage to pass it to her. Okay. Um, can I also oh. just describe that? Oh, go on. Uh, I look like shit. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> she's got like dark, dark circles. I think she's gaunt. I think she hasn't been eating as she should be. Um, I'm just looking at all my harm, and it's almost all psychological. Oh Jesus! Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Trying to meditate was probably a good move for you because you're really sort yeah. of losing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I might also be plasm soaked still. I don't know. Do we get cleaned? Um, you know but what? I'm plasm soaked. Plasm soaked. You know, plasm is. You know, electroplasm is. It's spiritual as well as as well as Great. physical, right? So I think that you can be plasm soaked for years if uh, <laughs> water doesn't water doesn't quite get it off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's almost like you know. Uh, uh, electrifying in a way that it's like someone's on edge all the time. <clears throat> but yeah, anyway, not looking good. Okay. You um, you kind of come up alongside Valkos. Maybe you think that there's going to be a moment of connection, a moment of communication, and Valkos quickly tries to hand you a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Valkos, did you make your roll? I did. I got a four. A four. Success with a consequence. And the problem is that you pause for a second. And when you pause for a second, you get the attention of one of the guards. Oh. Okay. This guard's name is Kafra. You know him because he's a sadistic son of a bitch. Mm. And he's like, Why'd we stop moving there? Kind of look and I say, I haven't seen anyone in years. Did I tell you to talk? He comes forward with an electrical prod. I just feel like I haven't. There will be no fraternization. Keep moving. (sighs) I kind of keep, I, I look back at the lady of my dreams <laughs> and keep moving. He keeps up alongside you, Valkos, kind of eyeing you closely. Let's get a search for this one. Step out of line. Wait, to, Step to, out to of Valkos, line. to Valkos, Valkos, right? Yeah. I'm like, is this really necessary? <laughs> I don't like you. I could fry your ass just because I feel like it. It's necessary because I say it's necessary. Strip search him. And two guards come up and they pull off your uniform and they look very thoroughly over every place you could hide something. But of course, you've already passed it to Juliette Belrose. Did you enjoy that? Back to your closet. 
<laughs> Enjoy the accommodations. And I, I have just, my eye on you. And I kind of, as soon as he says I, I'm like, yeah. Yes. And I kind of keep going. <laughs> so I have what? You have a broken. A, you have a broken off piece of the bottom of a pickaxe. <laughs> Worth it. Okay. <laughs> Listen, man. You, know, you can do some really cool shit with that shit. Yeah. You're a tinkerer. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so the first anniversary is the w- shiv it's wood, anniversary. Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's so- <laughs> I mean, Juliet is a technician. Juliet might be able to do something with that. Okay. Julia, yeah, these, yeah. Let's talk about playbook. Uh, your yeah. uh, crew XP. Oh, do you want right. to know what ability? I think. Yes. I'm... What ability are you taking? Okay, I was wrong. By the way, there's unlimited veteran. You are correct. I double check. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Great. Which made me change my choice that I thought I was going to do because I thought I should limit myself. And I'm also going to do a veteran ability. And I think it's this plasm soaked state as she's meditating, as she is like feeling whatever may be out there. And the ability I'm taking is Ghost Mind. Ooh, Ooh. What's that from? It's from the Whisper playbook. And what does and that give you? You're always aware of supernatural entities in your presence. And you take plus one die when you're gathering information about the supernatural. Wow, okay, perfect. Cool. That's great. That's what uh, being soaked in plasm for, you know, two weeks will do for you. Mm-hmm. All right, let's let's talk about the crew a little bit. Mm. Crew crew XP. And your crew let, let's let's talk a little bit about payout and everything in a minute, but but first let's just do crew XP. Did you execute a successful burglary, espionage, robbery, or sabotage? Yes, I'm gonna check that for you. You did ex- execute a sabotage operation. Did you contend with challenges above your station? Lots of them, checking that. <laughs> did you bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one? That was a huge score. That was a climactic score. Yes, you did. That fills up your XP tracker, which means your crew gets a new special ability. I'm gonna go ahead and clear oh, clear the XP tracker and say, did you express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of your crew? Yes, you did, because that was the entire point of season one, was... Who the hell is that? <laughs> the entire point of season one. Aw, puppies. <laughs> they could probably edit this if I wasn't going, there's a dog! <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll go, I'll go check. Uh, well, wait, let's just, okay. Uh, let's just say that uh, you have uh, a new bar cleared uh, of uh, XP and I put one in it from the final little trigger okay. there. And so your crew needs to decide on what your new special ability for your crew is. Oh my God. Oh Amazing. wow. Cause we've got, so, okay. We've got everyone steals. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. We got Crow's Veil. We've also got Crow's Veil. Very handy. Yeah. Um, which is very handy. Um, for a bunch of sick freaks like us. And then we got <laughs> all these, I mean, thievery related ones. Hmm. You sure do. Um, how about the one that lets us reduce extra heat? <laughs> it's slippery. Yeah. What is that? Oh. When you roll entanglements, roll twice and keep the one you want. When you reduce heat on the crew, take one. Plus one one die. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. uh, No, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Um, I was looking at that one too. Also, synchronize is quite cool. When you perform a group action, you make out multiple sixes from different roles as critical successes. Ooh, that's interesting. Like between us, you know? Mm hmm. But how synchronized is this crew? Are we? I know, it's true. We're We're, we're not very synced, are we? Not all of us. Why don't you think mm. about it? Okay. Why don't you think sure. about it? Because we have other things to talk about. Okay. A couple things happen based on your last score. Destroying the entire facility that was going to revitalize, not revitalize, 
sort of reconfigure the landscape in terms of how ghosts are dealt with in Duskfall. That was a huge, huge score. And you were hired to do it by the Path of Echoes. You have been given plus one status with the Path of Echoes, Ooh. bringing you to plus three with the Path of Echoes. Ooh, all right. They are your patron and you are now full allies. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Payoff is what we would do next. They promised you, I think it was six coin, but because of your covert drops, plus two coin. So eight coin all together. You needed just uh, just a little bit more before you could upgrade to tier two. I believe looking at your sheet, let's see here. Your coin, uh, I, I, you needed 16 total. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven. Plus, if you get the eight from this, that'll be fifteen. And then oh one of gosh. you could one of you could chip in th from your own cash on hand, and you could upgrade to tier two. Your strong tier one now. You could upgrade to strong uh, to weak tier two. However, I'm not giving you the coin until you get out of prison. Yeah. That's <laughs> Unless you can tell me how you somehow get access to it. That's very fair. Yeah. Heat. No, I die. Yeah. The heat from the last score. I think it was a <laughs> really, it wasn't a total chaos job, but it was a really high profile job that blew up a building. That's four heat. And mm -hmm. then I'm giving you plus one heat. And all together that fills up your heat tracker and brings you to wanted level two. When you're at wanted level two and you get captured by the blue coats and put into iron hook, that means your sentence is several months. Oh my god. You're gonna gosh. be in here for a couple months, everybody. <laughs> Yikes. Now what does that do to us? Well, here's what it yeah. does. In incarceration, you make an incarceration roll. The incarceration no. roll determines whether you do really well in the prison and actually make allies, make connections, maybe even take a prison claim or whether you take a trauma from being in prison because it is so Jesus. horrible and goes so poorly. <laughs> Normally you would just deal with the incarceration quickly. You'd make the role and you'd move on with the game. But because we're fully role playing the incarceration, I'm going to add or subtract die from the incarceration role based on your performance in the game. It's gonna be a little bit more like an engagement role. Oh, great. Okay. When we come back from our break, we're going to deal with the entanglements uh, and we're going to see how do you indulge a vice in prison? More of our version of Oz when we come back <laughs> here on Haunted City on the GCN Network. We're back, and we're in the clink, the slammer, <laughs> up the river, doing hard time in Ironhook Prison with our crew of scoundrels here on Haunted City on the Glass Cannon Network. Okay, guys, we dealt with your heat. We dealt with your wanted level. It's time for entanglements. Entanglements, if you recall, are something that happens during downtime where you find out what the fallout from your score may have been. And I think it would be great if we have one of our players roll their entanglements this time. So okay. you're, like, you're like, what What does that mean? It yeah. means you just take a D, well, actually it's not just a D6. It, it has to do with how uh, the tier of your crew, I believe. Uh, let me. Oh. And then you roll, you roll to see 
what may have happened while you were kind of off doing crew. Okay. So should we figure um, out if we're going oh, up? Oh, no, I'm sorry. The number of dice is equal to your wanted level, which is two oh. when you enter Iron Hook. So go ahead and roll your roll two dice, and I will tell you. And your heat right now is uh, all the way back to zero because it went when it went. So go ahead and roll two dice, and I'll tell you what your entanglement is. Who's do, you know Abu? Okay. Yeah. So he has the best dice. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, do, and do I just roll the heat? Or wanted. You just roll two dice because it's that the wanted level is two right now. Okay. Just two d6, anything that has it, I guess. How do I do that? Okay, cool. I'll just do that naturally through my character sheet because mm -hmm. my character is. Yeah. Dope. I think you oh. can always roll over the little dice symbol though, and then. You you want me to do it? Because I have physical dice. <gasps> oh. Do it. But, do but it. I have I have opposite dice luck of Abu. No, yeah. but it's fine. I, I like this. I don't know do how. it. All right, here we go. And that is a six. Noise. So, one day, while you are traveling out into the labor camp, Valkos, a another guard, a guard that you recognize as being named Silas, who is uh, young. He has the big, like, Victorian mutton chops, but they look like they don't really quite belong on his face. Right. Uh, and he always wears his uniform really tightly, like, perfectly crisp, clean, and sort of buttoned up. He walks uh, up to you and um, does a quick search on you and hands you a slip of paper and then walks away. Is this while I'm working? This is while you're well, moving my onto the site. No, it's where you're going in. Okay. I'm not going to read it now. Okay, great. That's probably smart. The <laughs> entanglement that was rolled was called cooperation. A plus three satisfaction asks you for a favor. Well, you only have one plus three satisfaction right now, so I guess we'll find out what the favor is in a little while. Hmm. But... For now, let us now move into the portion where we choose our downtime activities. I think that that's oh my gosh, wow. what we're doing now. And so, oh, we just we should just add one extra XP to the crew for that vengeful. Uh, oh, thank ability. you, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one more XP to the crew. The crew is very close to going to tier two if they can ever get out of prison and get their hands on the money they're owed. Okay, so let us start with <clears throat> the one we started with at the top of the show, at the top of the adventure, Juliet Bell Rose. You have All a right. lot of harm. Yeah. You have, do you have a lot of stress? Two away from trauma yet. Well, that ain't good. Yeah, so, and how does that work in prison? Does it just... Like, as time passes, does that increase in prison? Like, are there things that would make it go up while we're here, or...? If you ran a score in prison, which is <laughs> totally possible, then yes. But otherwise, you are safe from accruing stress right okay, now. Okay, okay. I just wanted to see in case there was some... Oh, let me say this. Mechanic. There's a little bit of... There's a free play aspect to yeah. how we do downtime. So, I guess if you wanted to accrue stress to push yourself or something on a roll coming up sure. here, then yeah, yeah you would yeah, gain yeah. stress. Yes, yeah. Okay, um, well, I think I should, the first thing I should do is try to um, get rid of some harm here. Um, and I think that that's what that, that meditation starts playing into. Um, and uh, I think... Yeah, I you think have the physiker, has... You have the physiker special ability. I do. Right? So yes. you can heal yourself, is that right? Yes, yes. Okay. Every, everyone in your crew gets plus one die to their healing treatment rolls, basically. Yes, okay. And I think it's like tuning into the ring and Valkos and trying to, almost trying to um, connect emotionally via 
the ring and I think she's testing out sending um mm, this this feeling of of not just calm but of love and hope and sort of seeing if if she can feel anything in return and hoping to quell some of this terrified plasm soaked weeping loss of nerve harm yeah that i have accrued i have four boxes filled oh my yeah. god so you're taking harm. negative one die and less effect to everything you do until you yeah. start until you start taking care of this so yes so go ahead and and tell me how your meditation goes you're going to roll your tinker ability or, or tinker action rather Oh. And uh, that's how it, that's how it works. Do you remember? Yes, that's so great. I forgot. It's wonderful. Because you're good at tinker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm adding a die. And you're adding a die because it says your crew gets plus one dice to their healing treatment rolls. Yeah. Everyone in your crew. You're in your yep. crew. Yep. Okay. Great. All right. Here we go. Five. Uh, okay. There's a five. Yeah. A five. Oh. You really could have used that. that you you cr- know, <laughs> critical. You get two segments. Two segments. That's pretty good. Only of two. Your healing. That's what you get for the five. Two segments of your healing clock. It's no, gonna no, take a while. T- two segments towards removing one. That's so so-, so. so the way it works is, yeah, you would get two se- when you fill up your healing clock. Then it removes like I think it removes like it moves things down a level, so you would still have you would. Let me let oh, me make sure. Oh, moves things down a level. Oh, thank it's, God. Okay, I thought it was just removing one section. When you at fill a time. your healing clock, reduce each instance of harm on your sheet by one level, then oh, clear okay. the clock. Oof. Yeah. Okay, so it's a so little I, better than I thought. It's not okay. quite as unforgiving as you might think. The healing rules are tough but fair, so you can heal a lot of stuff at once once you fill that clock. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think I'm probably just going to do that twice, though. If you know, just to if no one objects, Juliet Bell Rose is Go just going to take her second downtime activity now. And I want to uh, also say that this is taking place over many many yes. days. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, like yeah. ten more days pass Jesus. as you're doing this. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this again. Come on. How'd you and do? Hey. The six. There we hey. go. There six. we go. One six, and that means that you, all you needed was a five to fill your healing clock. A six gives you three segments. So, so can I fill one like towards the next? Yes, you can section okay great so and so they move they all move down one level everything moves down one level so the level one harms of weeping and loss of nerve are gone (laughs) right and you are left with the terrified and plasm soaked harms (laughs) but they are now at level one instead of level two okay um do you think uh what did uh do you think Juliet felt anything uh, in return that made her feel that way via the rings Valkos Oh, definitely. Definitely. I was like, you know, channeling just pure, like kind of love and joy and, and hope as well. I think I was feeling really down, but then actually Aww. it was a moment of like, okay. And I'm just looking at You guys are handling prison really well. Hey. Yeah. Um, just being reminded me that I think Ekphelia does not have one of these rings. Maybe right. it was yeah. taken away. So it's- maybe in, in that little vignette where it was like looking at the ring, that's not happening. It's... It's just like staring with glassy eyes at Finn as he spins more mushroom yarns. Yeah. While while this little tete-a-tete is occurring oh, of via rings. Of course, there was a, a chaff that you had to you had to skim off the top of the mushroom <laughs> brew, and that chaff was good food for dogs. Um, except if you fed them too much, I think the dogs started to hallucinate. Because they've got different biomechanical, uh, uh, you know, processes in their brains. They're very humans. wise, yes. <laughs> Sustainability is important. Yes. Uh, Use I every just... part of the mushroom. <laughs> and with that, let's move to Ekphelia. Ekphelia. 
Do you have okay. a downtime activity you'd like to use? Boy, do I. I'm, I am I want to feed. So very hungry. And um, How does one feed in prison? Well, well, that's why I called in that favor of free motion. So High Water gave me the go anywhere one time. Yeah. I would like I would like to go to the infirmary. Okay. Very good. Uh, you you go to the infirmary and you are what what time do you do this? What time is it like after everybody's been in lockdown or is it like during the day when people are moving to their work assignments? I'd like to do it when I when I would be the least observed. So, um after people night shift sounds the nighttime sounds like the right time. Right. So okay. Like, so you are, um, you, Finn is like snoring loudly, and High Water actually shows up at your cell and unlocks it and is like, I'll be back in an hour. As you wish. You head into the infirmary, and are you perhaps looking for someone who is unconscious or. Correct. Yeah. All right. So this so, is the yeah, this is called the fortune die, and the fortune die will determine whether there is a excellent candidate for your depredations. There is, there is a person uh, wrapped in gauze because they were shanked a bunch of times. <laughs> oh, tragic. Uh, it is a uh, a woman. Uh, with tattoos on her face, but you can't quite see uh, all of her face because it's very dark in here. There's only like a little bit of light. And there is, of course, a nurse on duty. All right. Um, then uh, let's see. So if I perceive that and this nurse kind of moving around, um, I'm going to attempt to get in there and just like poor, poor dear been through so much pain let's put some pleasure into the balance and just uh go over there and see if I can give them the kiss okay, so you're gonna <laughs> indulge your vice now I've set, yes, now I've, I've tried to set this up so that like I'm I'm, I'm putting myself in the position to be uh to have some advantages going into this situation. Um, do you, yeah, so what's my, so I'm just going to, I have to roll hunt every time I feed, it seems. Is that, is that correct? Is that, is that how it's different for a vampire? Because normally when you indulge a vice, you roll your lowest attribute rating. That's, that's right. But this says, the, the, the vampire character sheet says, use one downtime, downtime activity to, in bold, hunt, prey, mm -hmm. and indulge your vice. I read that as, you have to use the hunt uh, attribute. But I do too. I read it that way as well. I want a couple things. First, I want you to let me know how you get past this nurse. Great. Um, let's let's say um, I'll just uh, just kind of sweep in and uh, I hope you don't mind, but. Um, I know it's not policy, but she's my cousin, you understand? I was just wondering if I might have a moment of pious prayer by the bedside for her recovery, not only spiritually, but um, that this might not only be a place of punishment, but a place of reform where the soul undergoes through its suffering um, passes through a crucible, as it were. Coming in as lead and going out as gold. Might I pray for her? This Sister. woman has a this woman has a face like a hatchet. Oh, I assumed. <laughs> yes, she mm. doesn't look like she brooks any <laughs> hijinks or flim flam. However, your role playing was so good just now. Give me an action roll, and it's going to be risky. For standard effect. And that's to get by her? Just to get by her without her setting off some kind of 
without there being some sort of consequence. Sounds like sway to me. Uh, it does. Risky for standard, you said? That's right. All right, here we go. That is a five. A five. Success with a consequence. Uh, and uh, she says, uh, you want to see a patient? Uh, yes, indeed. In fact, she's right. Right there. You do a favor for me. Well, that just sounds humane, doesn't it? Do unto <laughs> others and all that. Get a letter to someone in your cell block. Oh, but of course, happy to play postman. Uh, who might I be delivering this little missive to? Her name's Aura. Hmm. And she writes down, uh, she starts writing some sort of message, and you can go and talk to, or rather, <laughs> you're not going to talk to her. You can go and deal with. Oh, She's poor just going to see you kiss your cousin. Mm -hmm. Oh, the poor thing's deprived of the power of speech. Oh, she'll see me kneeling nearby, my head bowed <laughs> in solemn contemplation. Um, and perhaps only a, only a very deep look would, would, would show that uh, Ekaprag's lips have touched hers through the bandages and are sucking her vital essence from her body. <laughs> Give me that hunt roll. All right. Oh, God, please be good. Hunt is one of my worst attributes. You got this. <laughs> you have got oh, oh, to be oh. fucking kidding me. What was it? It's a one. A one. So that's well, you ones. only had one die. That's right. So I believe that is it's one stress, right? Uh huh. Oh. But yeah, you know, uh, clear stress equal to the highest die result. Jeez. This uh, this woman that you're feeding from was already on death's door, mm. and it's like you just took like a sliver of life force <laughs> out of her. You took the last, yeah, you took the last Jenga block holding her up, <clears throat> and her her soul uh, crumbles, and then all of a sudden, like, ding, 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 and the nurse runs over to you and goes, "What did you do? Didn't do anything. She, she just um." The poor thing was hanging by a thread. A, a critical person might say it smacks of the quality of her, um, physica uh. care. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm wow. not that, but I'm, I, I of course know that she's received only the best. Um, she walks over to a panel on the wall and looking at you, she's about to press a button. Oh my God. Okay, I, I lunge for her. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, what do you do? I'm gonna, I'm, that was awful. That's like expecting a meal and getting a, getting just like a handful of raisins. No way. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna suck her down. We're alone. Uh, you said we're alone and we're, 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 we're here with the, the, the halt and the lame and the invalid. Do uh, yeah. it. Let's go. Uh, yes, absolutely. Go ahead and roll hunt again does this count as an extra downtime activity because you are doing it twice yes it does mm. yes, or, okay. or unless, unless it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> I'm hunting twice I think I, no, I think it has I think, to I think it's fair I think it's fair to say yes it does count so go ahead do it again here we go yes. oh beautiful more I like it What'd you there get that time? you go oh, six my. chits one six. Two, yes. three, four, wow five. that's really good uh, so, uh, thankfully, Hatchet Face here is um is full very of full of life, at least for now. Um, six chits, six uh, bars of life force f uh, flow out of her into you. And do you leave her unconscious? Do you leave her dead? Hmm. Uh, what a great question. She's seen me. She was about to call, do the alarm on me. And keep in mind, you rolled a six too. Yeah, I, she's she's gone. She gone. Um, Ooh, thump! Her body hits the side of the desk that she was sitting at earlier, and then <sighs> slumps under the desk. Yeah, yeah. and like I, I do like the idea that there's some sort of like electroplasmic vapor, kind of like 
coming from your mouth like you're standing in like the freezing cold for a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and also, I guess, like, perhaps crow's veily um, smoke as well to hide oh, this yeah. moisture. Oh, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> this, this moiter. And, the um, crow's veil goes up. And I might, uh, um, if there's... Tell me if this is too much now. I'm in an infirmary. Are there are there fun things to take away here? Like, I, I want to make this look like she maybe overindulged in some of her own medicine. Oh, mm. are there are there fun things to take away? There sure are, but they're in locked cabinets. You could get the key from her body. See, hey, that's a great idea, and, and, and I'm sure voice in Echphelia's head said that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There is no key on her body. Perhaps she doesn't have access to all of these things. And the your hour is starting to run out. But if you can give me some sort of role, there are like things like clerical supplies that could perhaps be used to break into the cabinet. Can I, I'm going to roll prowl to see if I can uh, um, find a... Uh, um, would, would that would that be... Prowl usually has to deal with movements. Okay, in that case, I'll do, uh, I guess, survey. Survey, very good. Give me a survey roll. Eh, two, no dice. No, you don't find anything that would be, like, the perfect tool to break you into this cabinet. And now you can start hearing people in the corridor walking this way. I grab her letter and I go. Very good. You return to your cell and... You don't see anybody outside. You hear Finn still snoring, and when you pull on your cell, it is locked. I'm locked out. You're locked out. Cool. <laughs> um, is this the... Okay. Suddenly, high water okay. steps out of the shadows and unlocks it for you. Everything go okay? And... Before this, Ecphelia looked like a dr- like a drug addict in the most profound stages of withdrawal. Looked dead. And now with a flashing smile, she was like, couldn't have gotten better, though. High, t- high water sort of steps away from you, unlocks the cell, and is looking at you with a, a look of skepticism and maybe even fear. Oof. Nighty night. Bony knocky. Clank. <laughs> and uh, now let us go to Valkos. Valkos? Mm. So, I am going to be trying to I mean, hang out with ghosts. <laughs> but I think... How are you going to hang out with ghosts in a so, prison? Now, this is, this, is, um, this is kind of wild. But... There are two ways of doing this. Um, the first, so you're saying that the the ecto, the, the 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 belly plasm thing is is of spiritual energy, right? Mm-hmm. So I think even though I'm in this locked, locked sort of a cabinet, little closet, um, I think the first thing I'm I'm, what I'm trying to do is almost uh, attune to the sort of this, this spiritual energy of this of this pulsating sort of like like light next to me and surely it must attract some form of ghost um and besides you, you, mean, prison, you're, you, you mean your uniform right that's what yeah, you're yeah. saying yeah I mean we're in a prison as well I mean there's gonna be plenty of ghosts here well yeah, it is right? it is electroplasm which is connected to ghosts in different ways it can be used to capture ghosts However, in order to get the uniform to do that, you would need to, I don't know, use an action to alter okay. it in some way. <laughs> okay. I'm going to I'm gonna use a tune. Right. A tune. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's try it. Okay. Let's see if this works. Uh, would it be controlled? It would be... No. Let's say it's going to be risky for standard effect. <laughs> got two. A two. Um, for a second, <laughs> just for a second, a hatchet-like face of a stern-looking woman appears in front of you, and she spits 
electroplasm all over your face and is gone. <laughs> Great, so I can't um, do anything with my vice. You can. Uh, that doesn't count as trying to indulge your vice. This, that's a little bit of free play. Okay. You'll have to figure out a different way to do it or so a different interpretation of your vice or what, something. What I might do then is... Okay. What is your vice described as? It's hang out with ghosts. It's weird. Just <laughs> hang out with ghosts. So what I'm actually going to do then is like through my meditation, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm meditating, right? And I'm, I'm listening to this. I'm, I'm listening to the silence. And you know, when silence can actually have a sound, it's almost piercing. It's almost uncomfortable. It's weird. It's almost like as if you're in this weird sort of space. I then just dive into that weirdness that 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 sort of silence that sound and i'm almost then replaying a very traumatic memory which is of my my uncle um as we all know um who was abusive as i was growing up and i'm replaying that to try and capture the but also i'm, I'm replaying the victory the feeling of victory that i gained when i was with the um uh with the oh my god the path of echoes. Uh, the path of echoes, and that's so I'm I'm so I'm attuning to the silence, listening to the silence, and try and almost trying to replay essentially that feeling, that 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 elation that I felt having been taken over by my uncle, but triumphant, triumphant, like becoming victorious at the, at the end of it all. Very good. <sighs> I would like another attune roll. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, oh, oh, wow, the luck has run out. <laughs> no, man. You are <laughs> unsuccessful in, like, kind of achieving that sort of spiritual state that you achieved before with the Path of Echoes. There's too many worries, too many cares. The environment isn't right. You're, you know, for all of your strength, it's hard being trapped in a little cinder block closet for hours and hours at a time it's hard working out in that mud pit for 12 hours a day each day and you just have been you just have been ridden too hard so <laughs> the thing that you find as you open your eyes again is the slip of paper that was given to you by the guard yep. What do I read? It says that this guard says Silas will take you to a different staging area in the quarry. Help to complete the tunnel. Tell no one about your work. I'll eat the mm. paper now. Did... Did that count as your downtime, though, or do you still have... No, that I doesn't don't... count as his downtime, because he didn't get to actually indulge his vice. You have so much. I know, I still got three. Then you know what I'm going to do? Can I... Can I... Because I've... Okay, this is what I'm going to do, then. I am going to train. Great. And how I'm going to train is I'm going to train on my insight. Mmm. And I'm going to use all three of my downtime to train on my insight. Really? Yes. Because right now your stress is one away from a trauma. I know. <laughs> I know. But if I'm struggling here and I'm not going to try anything else because this is this is it. This is this is what I, I tried it. It didn't work here. This isn't the right space. So instead, I'm going to go into like that kind of, you know, I'm, I'm balancing that stress like like a monk, you know? So I'm going to right. be training on my insight and trend, like, you know, focusing and really sort of trying, like, again, just really zeroing in on, on who I am, who other people are, you know, thinking of the, you know, the, the difficulty of the situation and the scenario that I'm in. I'm just like, I'm trying to break it down. I'm thinking, what would Juliet do in this scenario, in this circumstance? Because she's very insightful. And so I am trying to really focus on my insight now. Okay, so the only problem is, on page 155, under oh train, my God. 
You can train a given XP track only once per downtime. What? Okay. Oh. Uh, I can't believe okay. I caught that. <laughs> no. I su I'm sure we've done it more than once in the past. I'm a good GM. Oh, man. Okay. Damn. Why don't then you I'll use spend, well, should, Yeah. I'll spend one then on, on, on training then. Good. Okay. Mark your insight XP. And, and, and I think all of this... All of this meditation definitely would be training your, you know, your insight tracker, your ability to hunt, study, survey, and tinker with things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Should should we also? I don't. I, well, I don't know if you guys were convinced to do something else, but might it like change what you do if we actually get our crew ability or advancement? Oh yeah. Uh, yes, it might. So, are you going to go ahead and choose that now? You could take Did two. You, see? you could take two crew upgrades or a new crew special ability. I liked Ross. What you were suggesting in our break? Right? Yeah. yeah, in danger. If we select the the veter via the veteran selection of the Bravo special ability of dangerous, then we can add a plus one action rating to hunt, skirmish, or wreck each each of us. And well, I think we've proven we're very dangerous in these past, I don't know how many. I mean, I'll accept that. I don't know how it's relevant to what's happening in the prison right now. Well, it just helps, you know, our stats. <laughs> and it also, I mean, like, I think people kind of get an idea of how dangerous, I mean, someone tried to take my pillow, it didn't really go very well. And, you mm -hmm. know, so mm -hmm. I, I to a max of three, I should say. You can't train. Right, right. This doesn't give you a four. Okay. So go ahead and take that. I'm going to click veteran. Well, what? So, I have a way that it also RPs in, but. <laughs> all right. Well, do you want to give me the RP now or after we click it no, and no. make our do our bookkeeping? Yeah, click it, do your bookkeeping, and also veteran, and what's let it, Abu finish. What's it so, called? Oh, wow. Okay, we're still back in Abu. I <laughs> Joe, you're the one that was like, stop everything, go back to the character sheet, and now you're like, can Abu well, please finish role-playing? I wanted, in case it affected it. No, it does, if it, it does. If it affects it, there. tough shit! If there. it affects it, tough shit! You just have to just roll the dice. What, what, uh, let's, yes, let us finish Abu's role-playing, and then we will uh, do bookkeeping on the sheet, and then we will move forward. Abu, go ahead, Valkos. <laughs> where, 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 where are we? <laughs> I'm in my closet, and I yes. think what's ended up happening <laughs> is right. I've so I've read the note, and essentially, um, there is something inside me that says, "Okay, you know what? Fuck this calm nature. Who? What am I trying to do?" And again, I try and attune back into that scenario but I go with the idea of rage, of anger, of being dangerous. And I really, really just start wailing against the walls around me. Oh, you're causing a ruckus. Yes, but in a way of like, you know, trying to, ex it, it's like, it's almost like an exorcism of the self, but trying to call, it's like a, a reverse exorcism in a way. Of madness, okay. I'm now leaning into the madness. Here's what I'm gonna say. I'm not going to allow you to try to attune again. I've already allowed you to try to do it twice. Something's going to have to change in your circumstances. Now, I'm not also not going to say that what you just said didn't happen. But what I am going to say is after you kind of go wild in yourself for a little while, suddenly Kafra appears in front of your cell. Do we have a problem, Severosi? I kind of look at him. Things feeling kind of tight in there? <sighs> Wish you could Is stretch he... your legs? Yes. Yes. Is he in front of me? He's in front of you, in front of you through the bars. Okay. Please. You win. You win, open. Please. Yeah. You want me to let you out? No, 
Es es, es es. I want to eat your eyes. <laughs> he takes his shock wand. He points it at you. He presses a button. An arc of electricity goes from his shock wand to the light on your uniform. <laughs> it shocks you until your nerves spasm and you're on your knees. Right. Now, in that moment, did I feel <laughs> any sort of form of like close to death or some form of spirituality? Like, is there something in that <laughs> that I feel speak. like just, you know, brought me back to life again? Yeah, you you could be you could feel invigorated. You could feel invigorated. Yeah. I, I guess you're trying to indulge your vo vice, right? Mm-hmm. And that's pretty weird. So <laughs> which is your vice. So and, and you are looking for you are looking to cultivate the rage inside you, and this definitely would make you rageful. You can roll your lowest attribute to try to relieve stress from that. Okay. Only Valkos would uh relieve stress by being slightly tortured. So it's my <laughs> inside where we go. Hold on. No. Three. A three. Okay. okay, so you relieve three stress. Okay. Nice. Because you think in your mind, this this man is going to die. And it gives you clarity and purpose. Yes. And that makes everything feel less murky, less complicated. Yep. And it relieves stress. Yeah. And I'm going to just, because again, it's my final downtime. I'm gonna look at him again and be like, what a fucking beauty you are. I can't wait to take one of your eyes just so you can see yourself again and see how delicious you look. You know what I hear when you talk, prisoner? I hear dogs barking. <laughs> And you know what I hear or feel when I when you start t t t talking to he me? He walks away. He walks away. <laughs> oh, fear! <laughs> Have the fear. <laughs> Scared. <laughs> <laughs> really wants it. Really. Does anybody else have a downtime activity? I know Malcos cool. has another one coming to him. We use both of. Our, we only have two, right? I have oh, another you have one another. because of, you have an additional. I took I took the vampiric. Oh, and Valkos uh, maybe has two left. Two left. No. Yeah. No, I only have one left. Okay. Because Tra I trained in one. Oh and yeah. Then I did. Yeah. Um. What can we actually? Sorry. Can what can we do in our downtime again? You can acquire an asset, which right. would work even here in prison. You can, of course, indulge your vice and relieve stress. You can recover, like Juliet did. You can train, which you already knew, and then a long-term project, which might be a little difficult to work on from prison, but if you describe to me how, you could you could do that. Can I... So, oh, go on. I was going to say, can I do something that won't, you know, more in free play? Um, yes, of course. That won't... Obviously, I don't have a downtime ability, but I was just saying, we'd spoken in the past how probably... Juliet's vice should change. That her vice has always been the obligation to her deceased partner. And I think that that has definitely shifted. Yeah. Recently. And so um, I think that there is a new vice that develops. Oof. And maybe it develops like here in, in the in prison. Okay. And I wanted to incorporate, if we're taking this dangerous crew upgrade, where hers is going to go into uh, skirmish. Wait, I think everybody has to choose the same one. No. Oh, everyone has to pick Do we have to choose the same one? No. Well, no, let, we, no. Let, me, let me read it Looks as... Looks like we can pick... Let me read the <laughs> ability as written. Here it is. Each 
PC may add plus one rating to hunt, skirmish, or wreck. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like it's a choice. Sorry, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so hers is going to go into skirmish for sure, and um, I think that this is going to be a new vice, and the vice is going to be weird. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> um, and I think, you know, like I said, this won't actually uh, result in her getting any stress taken off, but the way that she uh, is going to be indulging it is I think she looks at her cellmate and uh, basically just asks her as she's like carving into the wall or whatever she's doing. Who's this? Raysa? Raysa. And gives her like this weird smile and says... Uh, do you want to fight? <laughs> and I, I think she just like leaps off the cot or whatever, the bunk bed, and like goes to start like pummeling and fighting her cellmate. Okay. Is this the way she relieves stress now? Yeah. Because that she's doesn't, associated that doesn't sound it. like well, that doesn't sound like weird to me. You don't think that's Dude, weird? That is, that's no. Weird. You... Well, what does it fall under? <laughs> I mean, if we're if we're if we're gonna, I mean, the thing is, everything seems weird in Blades in the Dark because that's... it's a weird world. But weird means doing something like Valkos does, where you actually allow ghosts to possess you for several days at a time. This sounds more like she wants stupor. She wants to get beaten. Or like go into a rage-filled okay. mode yeah. where wow, that's pretty... she doesn't even know herself. Yeah, I'm fine with it being a different category. I just thought it was would fall under that. Yeah, new vice stupor described as underground pit fighting w when you get out into the city. But yeah. for now, uh, but for now, you are fighting Raysa, and I'm, I can't allow you to indulge your vice now because no, you've already yeah. used two downtime activities. Yeah, but I am no, curious. Actually. I'm gonna give you my downtime ability, so you oh, can indulge that vice. Oh, oh, amazing! Okay, thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, then uh, I want two things. I want to see how okay. the fight goes, but no matter what, it's gonna reduce stress for you. So okay. why don't we use your lowest attribute rating to indulge the vice first? Lowest attribute rating? Oh, and that's the full thing. Okay, so lowest would be resolve. <laughs> okay. Three. A three. So you. Uh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. You remove three dice. Let's see why. What happened? Give me a skirmish roll. Okay. It's going to be. It's going to be <laughs> risky, for great effect. And the reason why it's great effect is because she did not see this coming. You've been like <laughs> quietly like uh, meditating to yourself for weeks. Okay. Yeah. Um. Here we go. Oh, four. A four? Success, success with a consequence. The consequence is it's very clear you've been fighting when you get done. You actually yeah. you actually win the fight. Because she didn't even see it coming. It was kind of a sucker <laughs> punch. But she gets in a couple of hits of herself. Herself. Nothing enough to put a harm on your sheet. But ooh, do you have a black eye? Do you have like a, a bloody lip? Yeah, what, I, I mean, think a busted lip. It's like swollen. Bloody, yeah, uh, yeah. Wow, Julia Bell Rose is really taking a turn as a character here. Well, and I'm gonna right. call. I'm gonna put the put it under pleasure, not stupor, because I think she's thinking of Valkos as she dies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I still don't think that that's pleasure in the same you way. Don't? I don't think it's weird. No, I think it's it's. I think it's stupor because okay, uh, okay. let me let me just see what are all the options. Um, I mean, they're under the same sort of category, the pleasure stupor. That's why I was like, they're kind of. Yeah, uh, pleasure is more like well, pleasure is let's be let's be honest. It's usually sex. It's okay. Usually, sex. Let me let's let's just look through it real quick. We have time. We have time. We can do this. <laughs> stupor. You seek oblivion in the abuse of drugs, drinking. Getting beaten to a pulp. At oh, that's in stupor? That's in stupor. Okay, then yeah. Okay. Julia Bell Rose having some uh, character going through ch ch, -ch changes. <laughs> and that leaves Ophelia with one last downtime activity. 
I would like to use this to acquire an asset. Okay. The book says that an asset can be a cohort, oh. an expert or gang. Yes. Um, I've been I've been separated from Juliet <laughs> while she's been kept away from me. While oh, she's man. been passing sweet nothings to her very intimate friend. I would like to have an intimate friend also. Um I want my uh, own I want my own Valkos. Um oh. <laughs> like, This is like when 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 the when you you see an ex and they've got someone who looks kind of like you. Yeah, they're like <laughs> so obsessed that it's yeah. Mm. They're like becoming mm. Um so whoever that might be, it could be Finn, it could be someone we've already met or not. But I want to, I want to, I want someone that can, I want, and in also in vampire terms, I want a Renfield for this. Yes. For this little. Very uh, good. Now you understand that acquiring the asset is a temporary use of an asset. I understand. So, this would be for prison, maybe prison only, <laughs> for, for, for you know whatever, what? whatever happens Maybe not after. even for prison only. You might be able to take this character into your next score. Okay. Terrific. So. Go ahead and roll to acquire the asset, and then based on your roll, either I will describe a lot about the asset or you will. Okay. Okay. Um, Consort, I think, would make sense for this. Yeah, actually, you roll the crew's tier. Oh, okay. And the result indicates the quality of the asset that you get. Oh, that's fun. Okay, cool. What's the crew's tier at the moment? Two or one? Uh, it's 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 one because you haven't fully upgraded yet. You need the right. coin to do that. Um, you, you don't oh, get yeah. any plus dice to this roll, but I'm also not going to set a minimum quality level because, you know, you're saying anybody, any, any port in a storm here, anybody that'll mm -hmm. act as your slave will do, right? Right. And I'm, and I, you know, my pool is somewhat limited or uh, there are strictures on that on account of my situation, but, uh, okay. So I'm just rolling one die and we're seeing what the quality is. Okay, great. Here we go. <laughs> oh Jesus! I rolled a one. <laughs> oh fantastic. no! I got a total bozo. Quality yeah. one. <laughs> well, I think we've established that Finn is pretty useless. Great. And so Finn is your person who will kind of do your bidding and do whatever you want. But keep in mind, it's temporary use of an asset. So <laughs> if you want to, I use met someone too. It's fine. <laughs> Your time, your time is passing, and I want one final action from your characters. I think we've used up all the downtime activities. Is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want one final free play action from each of you, which we will resolve fairly quickly, and then we will make this final incarceration roll and see how it all went. Great. So let me start with Juliet Bell Rose. Oh. And if you don't, and if you don't have a final thing you'd like to do or you'd like to see what one of the others is doing and maybe assist them or something like that, that's fine as well. Yes, let me see what they're doing. Okay, very good. Valkos, mm. you have I've, some time left. What do you I've, do? Yeah, I've chased up with uh, Silas and uh, yes. decided to, you know, work with him in regards to building this, this tunnel. Yes, so each day you are no longer hauling precious minerals out of the earth. Instead, Silas takes you to a work detail with just one other prisoner and you are digging a tunnel and it is very deep, very deep into the side of the hill and you realize that you are digging under the lightning barriers out into the Deathlands. Oh my god. When you realize that, do you continue to go along with it? Who's the other prisoner with me? The other prisoner is named Aura. Mm -hmm. I kind of turn to Silas and I'm like, so, uh, 
Why are you doing this? Let's just say that I believe in a cause. And you? Who, me? Yes. And how does Aura look? Aura is sort of um, small and uh, kind of bird-like and uh, moves her eyes about a lot rapidly uh, and sometimes seems to be looking at something that you can't really see. Uh, and she says, I- I'm a specialist. Um, the path has uh, used my services on occasion. The path. You're one of us as well, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. And I just keep digging now with, like, ridiculous vigor. Let's see if you open a secret tunnel from the prison into the Deathlands. <laughs> what action do you think you're using to dig over these, uh, over these like, two months you're in prison to see if you get through? What action do you think you use? I think it would be prowl, right? Because we're trying to move unseen. I love that. Right? I love yeah. that. Give me a prowl roll. Okay. And is this something that we can help with? Or is this so, like, is this a separate assignment? Uh, this, I don't think that you can help with this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What now, is Valkos the position? may have chosen to do something else that you could help with, but he did not. He chose no, 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 to do no. this. Valkos, mm. what is your, uh, you're going to roll prowl. It is going what to is be. What is the position? Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be desperate for great effect. If someone catches you doing this, the punishment will be harsh. <sighs> can I, can I make a devil's bargain? You can make a devil's bargain. You oh. can make a devil's bargain. Damn. The devil's bargain is that the devil's bargain is if you mess this up, you're going to have to go in. Well, no, that would be the normal consequence. The consequence is if you if you fail this role, you're going to be in prison for many more months. Okay. Maybe for life, because they do not take breaching the the lightning barriers very lightly. Okay. But what do the, I get? The devil's bargain is <laughs> you can have plus one die if huh, you can have plus one die if you throw suspicion onto another prisoner. Okay, I know if which you one. somehow get the guards to follow another prisoner to get their eyes off of you. Yeah, I know which one. Okay. Who do you pick as your as your target? Sim. Yeah. Okay, great. So I want two rolls. One is the setup action where you're throwing suspicion onto him, and then I want that prowl roll. Okay, so the suspicion I throw is with finesse, because I'm trying okay. to uh, it's to put something in his pockets or you plant anything some like contraband that. on him. Go yeah. for it. Uh, in a, is that a risky uh, position or risky for standard effect? Risky for standard. Five. That's success Five. with a consequence. Success with a consequence. The consequence is that as the guards are dragging him away, he goes, "I know. I'll find you. I'll find you, you Severosi rat." I'll find you when I get out of here. I'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> now let me have that prowl roll, and you get plus one die for it. That's right. For a great effect. Plus one die. Six, baby. Ooh, yes. Yeah. He's back. He's back. One day before your time is up, suddenly your shovels punch through. Dirt falls from above, and you hear wailing voices overhead and you feel a cold air sink down into the tunnel and Valkos you feel a presence creeping down into the tunnel with you and you hear Aura say I feel them they're here with us now and that's when 
a spirit fills your body, Valkos. <laughs> and the rest of your time in prison, you are not in control. <gasps> what? Ekphelia, one final thing you do. Um, warming up with uh, Mr. Finn, and I'm just absentmindedly unrolling a piece of paper that I got from the infirmary and reading <laughs> this note to Aura from a certain deceased nurse. Yeah, it's um, it's a key. She kind of carefully wrote uh, a note saying, this will get you into the cabinet for what you need uh. and leave the key again uh, at, at a certain location. It's actually like a trash can near the you know, the food area. Okay, so, hmm, wish I'd opened this earlier. <laughs> 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 but okay, um, I could get some some of that stuff. And uh, now, now the name Aura has a certain resonance to me. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that'll really only be of use if I can put the screws to, uh, what is it, was it high water to let me back out? Do you want to get out and get some things out of the infirmary? Yeah, of course. Very good. So, high water, you uh, are you're at mess again, and you're you know doling out your food to other prisoners. And high water is sitting with uh, his crew, a bunch of the bill hooks, and they are scary looking bearded men. Mm-hmm. Ah, great. Um, just like slide my mushroom slop over to him. I'm just wondering if I might have a uh, another little stroll if it's at all convenient to you. I don't think so. No? I don't know what you did to that nurse. They didn't find any marks on her. But I'm not in the habit of doing business with people that put me at risk. So the answer is no. And if you know what's good for you, you'll get the hell away from me, or my boys will pull you apart. Well, we'd not like that, would we? It's always a shame to be blamed when someone so clearly perishes of natural causes. Bad things happen every day. He doesn't Um, believe you for a second. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm, are you trying to threaten him? I don't really have any leverage to. Uh, okay. um, or I guess intimidated. I mean, I, I, I could, but I am in an odd position to that since he's there with all his boys. Um, well, I would come help. <laughs> I think I might, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it just depends what you're to. trying to do. I don't know what you're trying to do. <laughs> I mean, I'm, all I'm trying to do is I, I would just want to get back to the infirmary. Now I'm like, okay, mm. this avenue is shut. Uh, um, or is it? Um, or I might say, like, well, let's try cajoling a little bit more. What if I made it worth your while? I don't do business with psychopaths. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I think we all do what we need to do to uh, get by day to day in here. Let the, the judges and the magistrates out there keep their judgment. Let's reserve and survive. What if I were to um, bring you some things that might be of use to you? Sedatives. Implements. I could get you these things. You think I don't have everything I need? I don't presume to know what you have or you he, don't. Uh, he motions one of his guys over, and the guy hands him a little bit of powder on a paper, and he goes, Hey! Hey! He motions to one of the guards, throw this away for me. <laughs> the guard takes it and goes and throws it away. Oh, no. All right. Uh, <laughs> we might kill 
We might murder. We might mutilate, maim, and steal. But the bill hooks don't truck in your kind of voodoo. I'm gonna tell my guys on the outside to keep an eye on you. Will you do that? Sorry for the interruption, gentlemen. I can tell you, you're very, very busy keeping your little organization ship shape. Let's do this. <sighs> We're almost out of time. Yeah. Juliet Bellrose, do you have one final very quick thing we can throw in here to kind of put a capper on things before I make this roll to see how incarceration went for all of you? Mm. Um. Mm. You could say I no, or you could narrate it later. It's up to you. In these, in these, like sort of, you say there's like a mess hall type thing. Yeah. Um. Do I get to? Can I meet Ekphelia? Of course you can. I'm going to um, briefly. They're changing. Yes, yes, you know, yes. it's it's like again, it's like lines of people moving past each other. I think I think the passing. I would like to pass the shiv off to Ophelia. <laughs> hmm. Okay, and have you been working on it? Have you sharpened it into a full shiv now? Absolutely. I feel like that's easy work for me. It's a dangerous tool. Ophelia, I'm not even going to make you roll. Ophelia, you now have a shiv in your hand. Great. And I pass and off it's... some food to you as well. Oh, yeah. And then pass it. It's, I think she like whispers in your ear like, my dear. Darling. Yeah, and you just and I watch you as you go, and uh, maybe as you go to your position at table, you see that Ophelia is still watching you from the line with unblinking eyes <laughs> as they go back to their cell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. I don't think there's anything in particular. I think, and I think I think it's just that uh, in passing, both of them see uh, Juliet. Maybe in various levels of being beat up, but blissfully so. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I'm, if I, right, you're all bloodied up. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and so if I can say anything like, as you pass that to me, it's just, who did it? I did it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my and so that gives me all the more reason to just kind of watch you as I <laughs> depart. <laughs> Ophelia, before you were released from prison, you did something with that shiv. What did you do? Oh, cool. I could just decide that? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> we're doing a bit of an epilogue right now, so you can just decide it. Um, my, uh, my cohort, Finn, after some uh, cajoling and like months of wrapping him around my finger, uh, Finn put Finn uh, stumbles over and puts that shiv right in the kidney of high water. Oh. Ah! And Finn's just going. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't trace it back to you because you didn't do it. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> Normally you roll the tier level to decide how the incarceration went. But you discovered the tunnel to the Deathlands, and you managed to shiv a bill hook. I'm giving you two more die. <laughs> Here we go. Your highest roll is a six. Yes. Oh. That means you do your time well. Your crew gains one prison claim and plus one faction status with a faction that you assisted while you served your time. Oh. We'll have to think about who that is, and we'll have to choose our prison claim when we come back next time with a score awesome. here on Haunted City. Woo! Yay! Oh, I'm excited. Served your time well. Thank you. <laughs> Josephine McAdam, Ross Bryant, and Abu Salim. We'll be back in the City of Ghosts next week. Good night. <laughs>